Seamus Donahue of Eve University. This video will cover two subjects, uh, the importance of what are called support skills and the, a review of the upcoming changes to skill groupings and naming in the Odyssey 1.1 patch. First, support skills. A lot of new players in EVE Online will make the mistake of trying to rush up into the larger uh, starship sizes uh, before they're actually ready to make use of them. For example, I'm looking here at a Hyperion class Galente battleship. And if we right click on it and show info, and we go to the prerequisites tab, you'll see that this needs Galente battleship 1 as well as a series of prerequisites of prerequisites. So Spaceship Command 4, Galente Battlecruiser 3, Galente Cruiser 3, Galente Destroyer 3, Galente Frigate 3. So some new players may just take a look at a particular sh may just take a look at the show info for a particular ship type, just look at the prerequisites tab for that ship alone, try to rush up into that ship type and try to rush into um, a content that they may not be ready for. Oh, I'll just uh, inject all these skills and trade up into battleships and steamroll level four missions. Stop. Hold it right there. It's not just the prerequisites for the ship itself that you need to be concerned with. A ship by itself is only useful for going from point A to point B and being an extra layer of protection around your pod, so that the ship has to be destroyed before your pod can be shot at. If you actually want a ship to be useful, you have to fit it with modules, drones, and rigs. So let me open my fitting window here. And just to refresh your memory, these are the rig slots, followed by high slots, mid slots, and low slots. You also have your ship's cargo hold, you also have your ship's drone bay, if it has a drone bay larger than zero. If it is exactly zero, it does not have a drone bay. You've also got your CPU bar and your power grid bar. So in order for your by the way, I'm keeping my rig slots empty because I haven't decided how I want to rig my Hyperion. You will rig your ship different ways depending upon what it is that you want to use it for. For the time being, I don't want to commit a rig right now, which is why I've left the rig slots empty. But if I were going to put the Hyperion to use, I would have to choose some rigs and put the rigs in here. If I want my Hyperion to actually shoot stuff, I need to attach turrets to this thing, or missile launchers. Uh, for the case of the Hyperion, it's turrets, because it's got six turret hardpoints, one missile launcher hardpoint. This is a gunboat, not a, not much of a missile boat. Okay. So in the high slots, I have compressed coil gun one, for example, and I can show info on the gun, and it has its own prerequisites. So I need small hybrid turret three, medium hybrid turret three, large hybrid turret one, right, and gunnery five. Uh, if I want to take this into missions against, say, Angel Cartel, which deal mostly explosive and kinetic damage, uh, I've got an armor, a large armor repairer too, to fix my armor whenever I take damage. So that has prerequisites of its own: mechanics five, repair systems four. Right. But if I'm expecting uh, explosive and kinetic damage, my armor is kind of weak to that. So I need to fix that with by placing on armor explosive hardeners and an armor kinetic hardener. For Angel Cartel, I would usually advise two explosive hardeners and one kinetic hardener, whether you're shield or armor tanking. But armor tanking, I really do need those hardeners, because otherwise I'm going to take a lot of damage when that explosive and kinetic uh, damage comes in at me. My resistance numbers are still low because I'm docked in station. Uh, these numbers will increase when I undock and then turn on the hardeners. A damage control is always a good idea to fit to your ship. It increases all of your resistances across the board. Uh, for more advanced players, or not as basic players anyway, uh, it's worth knowing that the damage control is not subject to stacking penalties on your resistances. Uh, now, of course, uh, all of this stuff, 
I forgot to mention the other modules I have on here. So besides the armor repair, I like to be able to move a little bit quickly. Some missions will, will make my battleship cover a lot of distance. So I'll have an afterburner on here. Without it, I only move 143 meters per second. With the afterburner and with my skills, I move 376 meters per second. But it has its own prerequisites, afterburner level 4. Uh, my scan resolution is only 137 millimeters. Uh, by the way, in EVE Online, larger numbers are better for the scan resolution. Which means it takes my ship a while to target lock things. For comparison, interceptors usually have around a thousand millimeters of scan resolution. So I'll have a sensor booster loaded with a scan resolution script. And the sensor booster itself has prerequisites, long range targeting four. And of course, all of this stuff needs capacitor energy to run. So I'll have capacitor power relays in the low slots and capacitor and cap rechargers in my mid slots, but even those also have prerequisites. Energy grid upgrades 3 and energy grid upgrades level 4. And of course if I want to throw on rigs in here, the rigs themselves will have prerequisites. Uh, for, if I were going to use this for mission running, I would probably use large capacitor, large capacitor control circuits. Here we go. And the large capacitor control circuits require jury rigging level one. Right. Uh, I'd probably also. It's worth noting that medium cruiser-sized weapons and battleship-sized weapons tend to have a hard time dealing effective damage to frigates. The battleship-sized weapons more so. Your battleship guns are going to have a really hard time hitting those frigates unless you or somebody else is webifying and or target painting those frigates for you to make them easier targets. If they're not being webified, and if you're running this fit in a mission solo, your high slot guns are never going to hit those frigates unless you're shooting them from really far out, like 50 kilometers or more. Because at 50 kilometers out, uh, most mission rats are pretty stupid about their approach. They'll come at you pretty at a pretty steep angle. You might be able to nail them then, but once they get close, they're going to be circling you so fast you're going to miss all the time. Which, by the way, brings up the subject of turret tracking speed accuracy and signature resolution. I'm not going to go into further detail about that, I'll just refer you to the University Wiki article about turret damage. So to deal with small targets like that, I'm going to need drones. If I'm going up against Angel Cartel, I want my drones to deal kinetic damage, so I'll bring Warrior 2s. And if I'm dealing with those Angel Cartel battleships that like to orbit me at 8 kilometers out, and I've got long-range guns with poor tracking, maybe they'll hit a close-orbiting battleship? It's a maybe? So, for those cases, I'll, since my Hyperion has a 175 cubic meter drone bay, I will bring Berserkers. Uh, but it is also worth, let's see, what is my drone bandwidth? 125 megabits per second. So I can put out five berserkers to deal with Angel Cartel battleships. And in case I'm stupid, and I start fighting garistas while forgetting to change my drones, I also have some space left over for hobgoblins, which deal thermal damage, which are good against most other kinds of mission rats besides Angel Cartel. But of course, the drones themselves also have prerequisites. Scout Drone Operation 5. For the Tech 2 Hobgoblins, Scout Drone Operation 5. Galente Drone Specialization 1. Drones Level 1. Actually, Drones Level 5 is a prerequisite of a prerequisite. So it's not only the prerequisites of the ship, it's also the prerequisites of the modules, drones, and rigs that you're using. Right? Uh, if you're flying a missile ship, then the missiles themselves also have prerequisites that you need to be aware of. So if you want to be able to use light missiles, for example, and let's show info on one of these, you need light missiles level 1, missile launcher operation level 2. This is a special consideration uh, given that the launcher itself and if I take a look at the launchers, the missile launchers themselves only have missile launcher operation level 1 as a prerequisite. 
So if all you've got is missile launcher operation level one, but you don't have the light missile skill, you can fit the launcher to your ship, but you can't load the light missiles into the launcher. That, that's kind of like saying you can wield a pistol. You have the skills to wield a pistol, but you don't have the skills to actually load bullets into it. All right, so for missile users, uh, that's a uh, particularly confusing trap for new players. Besides the prerequisites of the things you're fitting to your ship, there are also skills that aren't directly prerequisites, but make your ship perform better. So for example, uh, if I can bring up my character sheet, all right, good. For a moment, I thought my game had crashed. If I bring up my character sheet, uh, besides the module slots, every module also requires power grid and CPU. If I max out the CPU or I max out the power grid, I cannot make use of any more modules that require that resource. Uh, so for CPU, I need to increase my electronics skill. Electronics, if you read the description, 5% bonus to ship CPU output per skill level. Uh, for the power grid, we go to engineering. And the description for that, 5% bonus to ship's power grid output per skill level. If we go to gunnery, and we look at weapon upgrades. 5% reduction per skill level in the CPU needs of weapon turrets, missile launchers, and smart bombs. Right. So because I have weapon upgrades level 5, my turrets require less CPU than normal. So my 25mm compressed coil gun ones, if I show info on them as fit to my ship, they only need 47.25 teraflops. If I go to the Variations tab and I show info on the same kind of gun, it's going to give me the market default. And go back to the Fitting tab, the market default says 63 teraflops per gun. But I only need 47.25 teraflops per gun because I have Weapon Upgrades 5. <coughs> same deal with Advanced Weapon Upgrades. That's a 2% reduction to the power grid needs of weapon turrets and launchers per level of the skill. And of course, since I'm using turrets, uh, I like to be able to hit things with turrets. So I have motion prediction. The motion prediction skill is a 5% bonus per skill level to weapon turret tracking speeds. I can hit targets that are trying to move around me in circles a little more easily. Not much, but every little bit helps sometimes. Sharpshooter, 5% bonus to weapon turret, optimal range per skill level. Rapid firing, 4% bonus per skill level to weapon turret, rate of fire. Controlled bursts, 5% reduction in capacitor need of weapon turrets per skill level. And of course, we're touching upon the capacitor again. Let me go back to engineering. So I've got the energy management skill. That's 5% bonus to capacitor capacity, to the capacitor size per skill level. Uh, energy systems operation. That's a 5% reduction in capacitor recharge time per skill level. And I'm just, this is just a small sampling. There's, there are many more support skills that are useful to you. And these are skills that you should train up uh, as you start progressing up through the larger ship sizes. Because the larger the size of the ship that you're going to try to fly, the more important skills are going to be. Additionally, even if you're just sticking to the smaller ships and you're just going to, into advanced types of small ships, like say, maybe you just like small ships, so you're just going to go with the Tech 2 small ships. Maybe you're going to fly, um, hold on, where are the frigates here? So maybe you're going to fly the Assault frigates, right? like an Enyo or an Ishker or a Harpy or what have you. Or you're going to fly an Interceptor, like an Ares, a Tyrannus, a Claw, a Stiletto, something like that. Having the support skills makes these ships better. Or even if you're going to just stick for, with Tech 1 frigates for quite a long time for whatever reason, uh, the support skills will also be useful to your Tech 1 frigates. 
a player who has a lot of support skills, their tech 1 frigates will perform better than a new player who doesn't have all of these same support skills. So support skills are very important, and really I'm just touching uh, the tip of the iceberg here. Okay. And because if you don't study that iceberg, it's going to sink you. All right, so with the importance of support skills hopefully being impressed upon you at this point, I'm going to move on to the second subject of this video, namely the changes to skill naming in and grouping in Odyssey. Uh, by the way, today is Sunday, August the 25th, 2013. Uh, the current Tranquility build is 590158. Let me switch over to my Singularity client. And this is what's on Singularity right now, build 590979. And here are how the skill groupings are changed in Singularity. Crowd Control Productions is changing this up uh, to try and make uh, the groupings more sensible. So for example, we have some new categories. Armor, for example, a lot of skills have been taken out of mechanics and put into their own armor group. Uh, so these contain your uh, armor tanking skills. Similarly, uh, the shield skills have been split out of engineering and have been put into their own group called shields. Uh, targeting has been taken out of... targeting related skills have been taken out of the electronics group and made their own uh, skill set. So you have target management and advanced target management. By the way, some skill names have been changed. Targeting is now target management. Multitasking is now advanced target management. It, basically, the names are being changed up to make it a bit more obvious what they do, uh, but their functionality hasn't changed. Uh, so, signature analysis to increase your scan rate, to increase your target, to improve your target lock times. The various sensor compensation skills to increase your sensor strength, make you more resistant to ECM jamming and more resistant to being located with probes. Uh, long range targeting so you can be found from further away. So all of these have been put into the targeting group now. Uh, the scanning related skills, uh, the astrometric stuff as well as hacking and archaeology and survey have been taken out of the science group and made their own uh, skill group. Uh, neural enhancement is the new skill group for anything having to do with jump clones or implants. So you have informorph psychology, a new skill called Advanced Infomorph Psychology. So if you train both of these up to level 5, now you can have 10 jump clones maximum instead of 5. Uh, neurotoxin control and recovery have been put into this skill group, uh, That's as well as biology, that's related to the use of combat boosters. Infomorph Synchronizing is a new skill. It will reduce uh, clone jump time by one hour per level, so you can drop that down from 24 hours down to 19 hours at best. The basic idea of that skill being if you regularly clone jump once a day, you don't have timer creep anymore. So today you clone jumped at 5 p.m., tomorrow you clone jumped at 5.01, 5.02 p.m., the day after you clone jumped at 5.10 p.m., the day after you clone jumped at 5... 20 p.m. and so on and so forth. That's timer creep. So informal synchronizing uh, is meant to address the timer creep issue. Uh, let's see. Production has been taken. The industry group no longer exists. That's been split into production and resource processing, by and large. Uh, so production uh, involves all the manufacturing stuff. And resource processing is where all of the refining and mining related skills are located now. Uh, they also put astrogeology into this group. So astrogeology is no longer grouped with science. You can load up your own Singularity client, take a look at the skill changes for yourself. Uh, you can also take a look at the... Uh, you can also take a look at the thread in the features and ideas discussion board. Um, I'll put a link to that thread in the description of this video. Right. 
So all of the changes that Crowd Control Productions are planning uh, for Odyssey 1.1 are detailed in this thread. Uh, I will end the video at this point. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.